I want to start off by clarifying a couple of terms I'll be using a lot in these guidance lectures. These are learning outcomes and assessment criteria. Learning outcomes define what you'll be expected to have learned when you come to the end of the unit. And assessment criteria are the, the criteria that the assessor will be applying to your assignment in order to assess whether you've covered the points in sufficient depth. So you could say that the, uh, the learning outcomes define what you should know and the assessment criteria are the criteria that the assessor will use to establish whether in fact you do know the subject. And the assessment criteria are divided into pass, merit and distinction criteria which the assessor will use to determine how to grade your assignment. This lecture will be focusing on the pass criteria, merit and distinction criteria are covered in later lectures. The first pass criteria for Unit 1 requires you to explain different types and purposes of organisations, public, private and voluntary sectors and legal structures. First of all, you need to write a very clear, succinct definition of the three main categories of organisation. That is public, private and voluntary organisations. And then explain the different purposes of each. For example, private sector organisations exist to make a profit for their owners and their shareholders. Although of course not all this profit is taken out of the business. Profits can be reinvested or spent on research and development. Private sector organisations generate tax revenue. For example, about 18% of UK government revenue comes from corporation tax. The public sector exists to fund services like education, healthcare, social services, emergency services, the civil service and the armed forces. These are generally services that could not be delivered fairly if the main motivation was profit. And the voluntary or not-for-profit sector supports specific causes and helps the, the vulnerable in society. Often where those working in the sector feel that government support is inadequate. And it also empowers people to, uh, to really make a difference in an area that they are passionate about. The second part of this question asks you to explain different legal structures. Here you need to explain what a sole trader is. And the idea that in legal terms a sole trader and their business are the same legal entity. So debts accrued by the business are debts for which the sole trader is personally liable. A partnership is an agreement between several people to work together to share responsibilities and to share profits. And partners also share the financial liabilities of the partnership. The status of a limited liability company is different because here the owner or owners and the company are separate legal entities. So the owner's liability is limited to the amount they have invested in the business and to any personal guarantees they have given. Directors of limited liability companies also have other legal responsibilities. For example, they have to file accounts and pay corporation tax by the due date. A public limited company sells shares to investors, including the general public, to raise capital. The shareholders receive a dividend on those shares if the company performs well. And the owners of a public limited company and its shareholders enjoy limited liability in the same way that the owners of a limited liability company do.